Cool. So there's the agenda, uh, testing and release updates. I will start on that. We, um, a lot of my focus has been on V0, 11, uh, V0 12. Um, the last thing really in that, in the queue there is um, getting the upgraded BLS, including that draft seven merge into the spec for the new test vectors. Um, I'll be looking at that today. Uh, we're trying to get this out in the next couple of days. I know it's a little late, um, but we've been, the, the blocker, there's been a, a number of things going on, but uh, getting this BLS is the last thing in there. Um, other than that, there are a number of uh, networking updates and modifications that came out of that networking call. Thank you for everyone for the input and review. Um, and uh, also some increased testing is gonna come out. Uh, there were some corner cases, especially around handling multiple different operations in blocks uh, that could result in some corner cases with respect to kind of modifying um, modifying state in the middle of state transitions. Uh, so might catch some, catch some new bugs on your end. Um, cool, so that is imminent. Um, any other updates on this? Cool. Let's run right into client updates. Uh, first, we'll have Techie. Sorry, Danny. Um, yes. Just thought I'd oh, give yeah, you a yeah, quick yeah, uh, update if that's all right. Thanks, Danny, please. And, uh, it's been a little while. No, no worries. Um, so we actually pushed a, a blog post last week that details um, all the stuff that we've been busy with. I'll just push it now on the chat before I forget. Um, and yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty good. We've done a lot of made a lot of progress on uh, the structural fuzzing. Um, so we've implemented and derived the arbitrary trait on our ETH2 types. So uh, we can now provide um, well-formed instances of uh, custom in custom types from row byte buffers. Um, so it's a huge improvement in our uh, fuzzing coverage. Um, so this has already allowed us to identify an integer underflow in an upstream dependency, um, the snappy crate that we use. Um, so the maintainer confirmed the bug. Uh, we pushed the PR, but it's uh, yet to be merged. Uh, over the last few weeks, we've been working with Teku and Nimbus. It's been really great uh, working with these guys. Uh, we've raised a bunch of issues. Some of them could have been exploited off the wire. Others are more um, hardening opportunities. Um, I guess the main ones, there was um, an infinite loop in Teku when um, SSZ decoding bit lists uh, without an end of list marker. And on Nimbus, there was a seg fault um, due to a stack overflowing with the process final updates function, if I recall correctly. Uh, we've updated the trophies list of big and fuzz. We're now up to 18 unique bugs, which is pretty cool. Uh, made some good progress uh, with the Golang integration. So just a quick reminder for everyone, we've been experiencing a lot of issues integrating both uh, Serenity and Prism. And we actually lined up a call with Prism uh, in a few hours to see how we can uh, better collaborate on, on this one and, and move forward. Um, yeah, in, if, you, if you go through the blog post, there's, uh, we're proposing a new architecture for the for Beacon Fuzz. Uh, so it's all outlined in the blog post. Please feel free to give us feedback. I'm super keen to hear from, from everyone on this. Uh, basically, we're gonna move away from C++ and re-implement the FFI bindings in Rust. Um, don't necessarily wanna go into details here, but uh, we're breaking down Beacon Fuzz into three separate tools, ETH2 Fuzz, which will be coverage guided fuzzing, uh, leveraging the structural fuzzing that we've been working on to generate interesting samples. Uh, ETH2 diff that will allow us to replay um, samples, those samples across all the implementations using the nice utilities that you guys have been building. So PCLI, LCLI, GCLI, and so on. And finally, the FI bindings. That's the core, I guess, differential fuzzing part. Uh, so that's Beacon Fuzz V2. There's a nice diagram uh, at the bottom of the blog post if you're, if you're interested. Uh, yeah, so please check it out. Super keen to get some feedback from everyone. Um, we'll also be pushing Docker images so that the community can help find bugs. Um, I think there's a lot of people asking how they can contribute to E2, um, and that might be an interesting experiment. Um, kudos to Justin Drake for the suggestion. Uh, we should be wrapping this up next week. And I guess finally, we've been starting uh, playing with Lodestar. Um, I think we caught a few type errors on the SSZ um, package, but 
you know, we're, we're not really just with experts. So I might reach out to Cayman next week to discuss this further, because uh, I guess most likely these are probably caught um, by the calling packages. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Thanks, Mehdi. Um, any I questions for Mehdi? Yeah. Yes. Uh, there was a discussion uh, three uh, weeks ago about um, uh, some beacon state that uh, yeah. shouldn't be trusted. Yes. Uh, so it involved uh, uh, everyone, but uh, apparently, um, well, last time I looked, uh, it was actually state that couldn't happen if uh, we yeah. were in an actual uh, functioning client. Uh, so what's the latest news on that? Uh, was yeah. the canvas modified or? Yes, so that's the reason why we're splitting things up so that um, we can avoid this confusion. Uh, you probably saw a issue or a PR from Danny. I don't think it ended up being merged uh, to the to specs repo, but um, we, we're probably gonna have to sync off beacon states at some point. Uh, so the whole, in my opinion, the whole concept of you know beacon states being trusted inputs, we we might not rely on this assumption for too long. Uh, in fact, we've uh, we found a couple of overflows on Lighthouse when dealing with you know invalid beacon states per se. So the spec the spec has actually been clarified, right? Like I think last week or two weeks ago. Uh, now, if you overflow in a state transition, it's clear that the state transition is uh, invalid. Which is good to see um, but yes we've been so the structural fuzzing help us um, mutate the beacon states better so that we can actually not only have valid SSZ containers valid beacon state SSZ containers but also valid uh, beacon states as per the spec um, so it's yeah it's one of the reasons why we split up the uh, the tool set that we have in three separate tools um, and uh, yeah those conversations were super interesting in my opinions so it, it raised a lot of uh, yeah interesting thoughts and uh, yeah thanks thanks everyone for being involved and I guess one of the the issues that we had as well is hitting the utilities um, NCLI for example um, was hitting directly the state transition uh, and bypassing all the potential checks that are performed at the networking layer so we we've now considered that and um, you know won't be raising such issues um, if if they arise in in, in the future. Hopefully that makes sense. Right, and I guess to clarify, um, in the <clears throat> syncing, there's there's probably two ways to sync a network uh, safely once the network's run for more than say three weeks. Um, one is to have some have a checkpoint uh, for a given epoch and block sync from from Genesis, uh, and then make sure that the checkpoint you reach is. Uh, that checkpoint route that you had. Um, that wouldn't involve having to get an untrusted uh, state from somewhere. Uh, but if you, um, instead, the, the, there's a much better UX around actually just starting from a state. You know, if you have this checkpoint uh, that, you, that you want, you wanna actually just start from that state. Um, so at that point, you're actually inputting a state and you, there's a there's an avenue to input a state into your system. Generally, you've got this from say a trusted source, uh, but there's a, a small likelihood that you've gotten it from a nefarious trusted source, and you have some sort of like um, tainted state that you're inputting into your system. Um, and so, I think that's the that's the nuance there. Obviously, you don't have to necessarily get it from the PTP network like I had in that PR, uh, but the idea of getting a state from somewhere and putting it into your system is certainly a, a flow that I think we're gonna all want because block sync from Genesis is um, not, it's not gonna be a, the best UX, uh, you know, once we get a few months into this thing. Yep, spot on. Cool, any follow up on that or other questions from Eddie? Cool, thank you. Um, Glad to see all the progress there and uh, the the trophies on that on your readme. Very exciting. Um, okay, um, other testing items. Let's discuss test nuts separately. Yeah, we're going to do client updates and then we'll go straight into test nuts. Great. Uh, so let's get started with Teku. Perfect. Uh, this is Jem from Teku. 
So in the past couple of weeks, uh, we added Snappy compression over Gossip and RPC. Uh, we also added support for ping and get metadata, metadata. Now we're randomly subscribing to persistent subnets. Um, we majorly reduced our memory usage while syncing. And lastly, we now have built-in support for syncing Schlesi. That's it. Cool. What's that memory usage look like on, say, Schlesi? Do you know? I think it's now averaging around like 900 megabytes to a gig. Uh, not 100% sure, but it's been a while since I was. Yeah, okay, cool. Thanks. Um, load start. Okay, so uh, over the past few weeks, um, we're finally starting to be able to sync. Um, as of today, we're, start, we're syncing kind of stably on Schlesi. Um, haven't yet reached the head, but we've synced uh, a few thousand epochs, um, worked through different gossip sub bugs and syncing bugs and what have you. Um, still not really stable, but hopefully um, the next few weeks we'll, we'll kind of nail down some of that node level stability. Uh, it still looks like our like our disk v five isn't running, so we are you know stuck with our bootstrap peers and it's not really sustainable. So um, different things like that we're still working through. Got it. Thanks, Cameron. Nimbus. Hi. So like uh, Lodestar, we had uh, multiple sync fix, uh, fixes in the past uh, three weeks, uh, in particular Snappy, uh, which uh, had a, a compatibility issue with Lighthouses. Uh, we now have a, a single make Schlesi uh, target to uh, connect to Schlesi. Uh, sync is working slowly, uh, but uh, steadily, let's say. Uh, and uh, right now the main focus uh, for uh, Schlesi and Sync is uh, working on performance, uh, in particular uh, on Windows. Uh, besides that, we, had, um, we have worked a lot on uh, multiple memory leaks uh, that were uh, preventing our, our testnet to last for a week. Uh, some were coming from uh, lip 2 p uh, some from our block caching system, and we had, we added uh, several uh, memory tracking tools. Uh, and uh, also, since we are entering, like uh, um, uh, we are focusing on bug fixing, we have uh, now uh, tools to debug on discovery, to debug early P2P topics and message uh, received. Got it. Thanks. And this probably goes without being said, but you know, once we once we have fast uh, state transitions, it seems like the the next big culprit is um, memory usage. Um, I know everyone's kind of been attacking this from different angles, uh, but be be sure to knock on each other's doors. I know there's a lot of um, pretty solid strategies to go off of now, so you don't have to do, do this alone. Um, Trinity, everyone, uh, not a huge update this week. Uh, mainly, we've been continuing our port to the Trio async framework. We have updates to the latest Beacon Node and Validator APIs, which is good to get into place. Uh, we've also made some progress on bringing more full-time contributors to the project, which uh, should just generally help out with everything we have going on. Cool. Thank you, Alex. Um, Nethermind. Just minor updates in the last week, so we've updated uh, a bit of the open API specification and the tested synchronizations, but had some problems with the Mothra networking. Not really much happening in the last two weeks. Got it. Thank you. Um, Prism. Hey guys, Terence here. So over the last few weeks, we've been working on just, just Topaz maintenance. We're fixing UX bugs and then users' feedback as they get reported in the Topaz testnet. Also fixing network bugs as they get reported in the multi-client testnet. So nothing really substantive from that regards, just typical bug fixes. We are also fully aligned to spec version 11.11.2, .2, uh, working into aligning into version 0.12 right now. 
And uh, Vitor has been doing great work on optimizing initial syncing. So his latest experiment resulted in 100 blocks per second during initial syncing. And this is without attestation signature verification. So we still need to optimize signature verification for initial syncing, basically what the Lighthouse is doing. Ivan and Shea have been doing great work on slashing detection. So Eric Hunter reported to us that one of his validator was earning more money than the rest. It turns out his validator has included a slashing object in the block. So that means that our um, backend slashing service is working. That means that pop sub um, slashing network is working. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, lastly, we have been running client production readiness tests, in particular stress tests, and then the inactivity finality tests. So we updated a few internal matrix to better, better suit for monitoring. We're running a 16,000 validators, one section, and then 20 nodes, and, no, and, then, and then no issue on that. So we're starting the inactivity finality test. We're waiting a few days to see the outcome of that. So yeah, we'll continue to put more stress on it. And uh, yep, that's it. Nice. Um, are you all running on short slot times on the, those stress tests? Yep, yep. Yeah, we're, we are doing one second right now. Oh, nice. Are, do you know if you're seeing any uh, degree of forking uh, uh, more than, say, on a, a normal 12-second slot time? Um, not necessarily, but we do see about 85% participation versus 99% okay. participation, and that's, and that's just due to timeout. Timeout from which angle? Sorry. From the RPC angle, just then we have about, like, 2,000 validators on one beacon node. So that's right, okay. a concept of our, 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 our PC request within a second. Gotcha. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, glad that y'all are pushing on those. Thanks, Terrence. Um, Lighthouse. That'll be me again. Um, so Paul's been busy implementing hierarchical key uh, der derivation for BLS. Uh, so we're ensuring interoperability with ETH2 uh, by Jim McDee. That's uh, being used by Prism. Uh, so he's implemented the key derivation generation, the BLS key store, and the BLS wallet. Um, quite excited to announce that we're kicking off the first external security review with Trail of Bits on Monday. Uh, so we've wrapped up the slashing protection, uh, spent a lot of time handling concurrency and city guarantees for database uh, transactions. Um, and we've also changed the directory structure to better suit audits in the future. Uh, we've been running several 16K validator test nets over the last couple of weeks. We've seen two panics, one from an upstream uh, package, one from our code, both have been fixed. Um, you were asking about memory usage, Danny. Uh, we've seen some great improvements there. Um, so we're looking at 300 megabytes uh, of RAM for uh, a node running, a big node and a validator client with 2K validators, uh, which is quite cool. Um, we've been working to fix some consensus bugs as well that have been identified by Justin Drake. Uh, so we've removed almost all parallelization from our state transition code. Um, it's not really needed anymore since we, we can do batch BLS verification now. Uh, we finished implementing full gossip sub verification logic, uh, caused a bunch of issues with our test harnesses. So, really looking forward to seeing how it runs on Schlesi. Uh, talk about Schlesi, we've, um, we've defaulted our uh, lighthouse to run on the Schlesi testnet by default. So, the spec and the Genesis state are now baked into our binary. Um, I guess other misc updates. Uh, we moved our disk v5 implementation into a standalone Sigma Prime repo, and we've been upgrading to stable futures the entire code base, uh, bumping all the lighthouse dependencies to the latest versions. Um, and yeah, so we, we're really almost done uh, with this massive upgrade that Adrian has been busy with, and we're hoping that Trail of Bits can uh, tackle uh, Lighthouse with these um, uh, incorporated. And uh, yeah, we've just been working on the RPC error handling as well, uh, and it's been integrated into our uh, reputation system. Cool. Thank you. And uh, the 300 megabytes, was that's a 16K testnet? Correct. Cool. Very good. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I believe that was all. Let's move on to test nets. Uh, we can start with Afri. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, I can talk a little bit of, uh, about multi-client test nets. A lot of stuff happened the last three weeks since our last call. Um, I did multiple attempts to create a multi-client test net 
that unfortunately failed, um, mainly due to network uh, uh, fragmentations, but also um, due to uh, bigger nodes disconnecting and rejecting other peers, each other for rate limiting and other reasons. Um, then we revealed the problem with the kind of edge case that the these two timestamps can be less than minimum Genesis time. So we had uh, different Genesis times calculated in uh, Prism and Lighthouse. Um, however, client teams are super responsive and I, I want to emphasize that I really appreciate it. Um, apparently we managed to launch a multi-client test net two weeks ago. Uh, we talked about it, it's called Schlesi, uh, that launched initially with two Lighthouse validators at Genesis and two uh, Prism validators. Um, in the beginning, the, the finality was horrible. Um, because some clients kept crashing and my validator nodes, I, <laughs> I had a hard time to keep them updated uh, and alive. But then again, uh, as I said, client teams are super helpful and responsive and um, we're doing an amazing job in, in fixing bugs. And uh, eventually now Schlesi has uh, a almost perfect uh, finality and liveliness um, for more than a week after fixing the most important bugs. And um, I think everyone is surprised how stable this network is running. Um, after a couple of days, uh, Teku joined the testnet since. Um, they managed to uh, uh, successfully uh, connect and sync the network first. But now I also know they run validators on Schlesi. So we have three full clients on um, Schlesi right now. I know that uh, the Nimbus, Nimbus Beacon Chain client is also synchronizing. Um, I, I still personally uh, experience networking and sync issues, um, but I know the team is very close to fixing it. Um, I didn't manage to get to the chain head yet, but I know it synchronizes and connects. Um, but maybe Proto has more details because he mentioned earlier today that he managed to put, uh, do a full sync on Schlesi. Um, I also know that Loadstar managed to connect and synchronize at least some epochs uh, on Schlesi, but I didn't test that out yet. So um, I'm aware of five clients right now, at least with partial, uh, some with full uh, support for Schlesi testnet. Um, I would be uh, interested in learning more about where Trinity and the Cortex client are uh, regarding interoperability or multi-client testnet efforts. And um, Given the current stability of the Schlesi testnet, I would uh, start working on um, outlining a coordinated multi-client testnet soon. Something that's based on the mainnet spec, ideally uh, on uh, targeting the version 0.12 of the specification uh, with 16k Genesis validators and maybe we can figure out a way to launch a testnet with three different clients at Genesis. That would be amazing. Uh, but that's all up for discussion. And also I had the idea maybe if we, if we do a more coordinated and more official uh, multi-client testnet, maybe we can also do a dry run test of a deposit contract ceremony on the testnet. But that's all uh, to be discussed. And um, I would carefully target um, maybe a, a June 2020 launch date, but uh, I'm still not very certain about how long it takes to implement uh, the version .12 of the ES2 spec in all clients, but uh, I'm open for uh, discussion here. But I think we can start talking about this now. Uh, that's it from my side. Yeah, thank you. Proto, do you have anything to fill in? All right, so I've been trying and experimenting with uh, Lodestar and Nimbus. There are clients that are uh, relatively new to the Special Testnet. Um, Lodestar has made some great progress in sync stability, and um, they're thinking they're indeed in syncing uh, many epochs, like a thousand or so. It's about ten percent of the Special Testnet, I think. Uh, so stability is getting there, and then Nimbus is close to or very close to the head of the chain, about a hundred blocks distance. This is where the sync mode changes. And I think like there are still some stability issues with this special sync mode for the last few blocks, uh, but it's working. And um, I've implemented support for them to show up on Eve stats. 
So if can, everyone can follow the test network. Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna get a, I'll put a diff up of what is going into B012 um, and outline uh, those items so that we can get a better estimate on how long it's gonna take. I think the, um, sorry, someone just messaged me. Um, I think the, uh, there are a number of networking changes. Most of these are very minor. I think the big thing is gonna be the um, support for BLS. I know that we just got it on Harumi uh, and I, I'm not sure the state of the Java implementation and the Malacro implementation. Does anybody, has anybody looked into those yet? Yeah, we're good. Um, we're, we're pretty much ready. Okay. Cux just pushed the latest changes. Um, so we should be 0 0.12 compliant in terms of BLS already. Great. Yeah, right. planning, to, planning to update the Java implementation uh, this weekend. I spent too much time messing around with Schlesi this week, but uh, <laughs> should be there soon. Awesome. And I know Python is also updated and we will have um, those test vectors output. So um, I think a like coordinated start in June is certainly like right at the beginning of June is, is like for some sort of larger coordinated start uh, will make a lot of sense. And I think we'll even be able to do um, some smaller test runs um, in the weeks before. Uh, but we'll, um, I guess that'll be more on the client end to s digest how much this P012 um, is gonna take. Um, cool, other conversation on test nets, questions, comments, thoughts. Okay. Moving into research updates, who wants to get us started? If nobody else volunteers. Um, Great. I, I could go from the EWASM perspective. Yes, please. Um, yeah, we, we have quite a bit to report because we haven't been a reporting as frequently on, on these calls last, I believe, uh, it was a few months ago. Um, so a week ago, we have released E1X64, the first variant of it. Um, it's, it's a write-up on Eat Research, but we also have a repo under the, the eWASM org on GitHub, uh, which has a much longer spec, uh, as well as it has examples written in Solidity. Uh, both of these are linked in the in the write-up. Um, so this first variant uh, uses receipts, uh, which are generated on the sending shard and need to be submitted on the receiving shard. Um, and the the simple examples um, we have regarding this are tokens, uh, two kinds of tokens. Uh, one of them is, is wrapped tokens. And with that example, it is possible to, to accomplish um, having die, for example, on, on all the different shards. Um, now on the next steps, we are looking into new variants. And uh, it's not entirely clear which we're gonna do next, but we, we have two uh, ideas on the plate. Uh, one is to look more into yanking, uh, and there have been different um, similar proposals regarding yanking, um, as well as by writing the, the variant one. Uh, if you look closely at the specification, in one of the appendices, there is something called rich transactions. Um, and we also use that to uh, devise yet another version of yanking, and we only uh, realize it res retrospectively, um, that it is kind of yanking. Um, so anyway, uh, I think we're going to either look into yanking uh, next uh, or um, something based on the eat transfer objects, um, which I believe was mentioned by Casey uh, as part of some uh, phase two ideas earlier on. Um, at this point, I also want to emphasize one of the, the main reasons for this e 64 uh, was not to, to move phase two into EVM. Uh, but rather to have a much smaller scale uh, to experiment with these kinds of designs, as well as to engage 
current dev developers and, and give them some kind of a, an understanding what sharding could look like. Uh, and that's why we have those solidity examples. And we really want to get feedback from those dev developers to guide us which design is, a, is something which, which could be useful to them. Um, but eventually, we do expect that the more useful designs uh, would mean much larger changes in the EVM, um, where it may not make sense anymore to keep EVM uh, because uh, the, at least historically, the, the Eat One community has been really reluctant to uh, accept um, radical EVM changes. Um, and if you would do radical EVM changes, then you already lose the the benefit of the existing EVM tooling. So you may as well just switch to, to a different um, engine such as WASM. Um, and then now maybe just switching over to uh, some updates on the benchmarking work we have been doing. Um, so the benchmarking work we do, because this is something we always mention and I think a lot of people just think the WASM team is working on benchmarking, but it's more like an on and off effort. Um, and in the past few months, we have been um, looking at some new engines, um, which seem to be performing, uh, one of them especially, uh, Wasm3 is performing much better than um, any of the other engines, but it seems to be um, a bit more complicated than the, the other interpreters, and we have found some edge cases where uh, metering could be challenging uh, this engine. Um, also, we have looked at um, another eWASM compatible uh, WASM engine called SSVM, but it doesn't really bring uh, uh, any speed benefits over, over Webit, which was our uh, main, um, main engine so far. Um, and I also mentioned Fizzy a few months ago, um, probably in February, uh, which is an interpreter written by the eWASM team. Um, and I'm happy to report that just today we managed to release the 01 the first version of it, which uh, passes a lot of the, the official tests, uh, but it doesn't uh, implement floating points. Um, and the, the reason for this release is because uh, next week or the week after we plan to, uh, to release 0 0.2, which has optimizations. Um, and we just wanted this first to have like a, a baseline uh, um, against the optimizations. And the, sorry for taking so long, but it's just a lot of stuff uh, okay. which, which happened. Um, and now coming into maybe a really interesting part. Um, so as part of the benchmarking, we have been looking at uh, all the different, uh, well, basically all the different pre-compiles which exist on EVM or on each one currently, because if you would propose like it wasn't based system, we wouldn't want to keep the pre-compiles. Um, and, we have reported this previously that um, with the elliptic curve precompiles, uh, we got quite good results. Um, so that was with the, the BN128 or BN254. Um, we got quite a good results with those, uh, including pairings, um, but it required uh, what we call uh, big integer host functions. Um, so those are, you could say those are kind of similar to precompiles, but those are much more primitive operations uh, than the precompiles uh, which exist on, on each one. Um, so as an example, it would be 256-bit addition uh, because WASM doesn't have it. Um, but we also proposed um, Montgomery multiplication on 256-bit numbers in this uh, big integer API. Um, and with those, we were able to achieve really good speeds um, on, on BN128. Um, and in the past month, we have been looking into BLS12. Um, and again, uh, we managed to reach uh, speeds very closely um, to, to the native speeds. Um, so first we have looked at, um, and all of this is on interpreters. So first we have looked at uh, just a basic uh, BLS12 implementation in Rust. Um, which didn't really produce the speeds we expected, um, or at least we hoped. Um, so just some random numbers here. Um, the, this Rust code compiled natively uh, was taking roughly five milliseconds for a two-point pairing. And the same compiled to, to WASM uh, was roughly 500 milliseconds. 
Um, and then we reach out to uh, Wasm Snark, um, Jordi uh, and the team behind Wasm Snark, um, because that has been the, the optimized Wasm implementation we have been using for BN128. Um, and they managed to implement uh, support for BLS12. Um, and that, with that code, um, with some more optimizations on the, the, the big inter, integer APIs, uh, we have been able to uh, move the, the speed down from 500 milliseconds to close to 14. Um, and I think with one set of the optimizations, we were able to get close to 8 milliseconds. Um, so that's less than, um, less than half the, or more than half the speed of native. Um, so I would say this is really good news that uh, um, even on BLS, we could, um, we could get um, to use BLS with our precompiles in WASM. Um, and the last part now is that uh, we were also interested to, to check if we can replicate these findings on EVM. Um, so in the past, I think three weeks, we have been working on a small project called EVM 384, uh, which we hope to release for tomorrow's uh, all core devs. Um, and under this, we have added three opcodes uh, to the EVM, uh, uh, which are uh, modular addition, modular sub uh, subtraction, and uh, Montgomery multiplication, all these working on 384 bit numbers. Um, and we have implemented um, just one building block of the pairing operation and uh, uh, made a molecular synthetic benchmark out of that to approximate the, the actual implementation because obviously in two, two, three weeks time, we don't have the capability to implement BLS12 on EVM. Um, but with this synthetic implementation, um, we got pretty close to the WASM numbers. Um, so all, in, in the end, what that means, we, we may be able to even get rid of the, the BLS12 precompiles for each one. Um, potentially, it seems to be possible to to replicate that with just three primitives. Um, I think that's all, and sorry it took so long, um, but hope you found it interesting. Yeah, all good, thank you. Um, and if you're interested in some of this stuff and you haven't read the X64 or the recent X64 post, check it out. Um, any follow-up or questions for Axic? Cool. Um, other research updates, and I've got a handful of people that might want to talk. Um, Vitalik? Um, looking into homomor homomorphic encryption things more, um, one thing that we, dis one that we discovered is that there's um, a use case for it in private information retrieval, so we'll probably ask more things. Um, um, around more things about that pretty soon. I'm also uh, published a, a post this morning, like basically a kind of open calling cryptographers to see if they can solve our uh, polynomial commi uh, commitment problems. Um, not too much, um, too much else in terms of uh, kind of research, researchy things, I, I guess. Spec side also um, also looking into some phase one simplifications, and um, on the proof of custody side. Oh right! Um, if you have been following proof of custody stuff, uh, check out Donkert has a new post on ETH Research um, that proposes removing the bit from the actual signature, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and I have a kind of mean thing that I haven't posted, but the follow up, which basically is the kind of reduce the, fre the, the frequency of uh, key revealing so you don't have to worry about kind of keeping track of reveal lateness and it's just like if you don't if you don't reveal in time then it's invalid so, right yeah so like between those two things it seems like we can cut the, the complexity of the proof of custody by more than half maybe two three quarters um, yeah which is awesome hmm. yeah the thing where it turns out that we got a bit unlucky is um, we will uh, went down this um, uh, rabbit hole of trying to get um, a uh, self-verifying proof of custody based on uh, Kate commitments. And it's, I mean, 
there is kind of there is efficiency and um, uncertainty. Is it would also bind us to using gate uh, using gate commitments for block verification. So there's um, there's uh, challenges in uh, going going down that path that don't exist if we just go down this kind of zero point zero uh, zero one bit approach. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, check out that post. It's pretty interesting. Very simple, uh, but might reduce complexity by a lot. Um, okay, other research updates? Do one for TXRX. Great. Um, for ETH1, ETH2 merge research, um, Mikhail has just released a, 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 an ETH research post about that. I think just shortly after our, um, the call last time, oh no, actually probably about a week ago, he released it. Um, and he started working on um, uh, a, a draft ETH1, ETH2 communication protocol uh, to, and, and he's kind of like working on a POC for uh, uh, phase one as well. Um, for the network monitor, um, we found uh, uh, that the Lighthouse is sending unsolicited UDP packets and so uh, we opened a PR for that. Uh, regarding fork choice tests, um, uh, we uh, kind of we've been uh, generating tests. Um, Alex has built this kind of transpiler for the tests, and uh, we found a bug already in Teku for the proto array implementation. Um, and a uh, bit around the fork choice tests uh, made improvements to Onatol, which is the high spec transpiler. Um, so now it can translate um, phase one spec and found uh, three bugs or three, we've opened three PRs regarding a pi spec for phase one uh, based on the results from that. Uh, mm, and then uh, implemented gossip 1.1 on JVM lib P2P. Fantastic. Those are all awesome things. Thank you. Um, other research updates. Guillaume, any success in um, making an RPC uh, consensus engine for Geth? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a PR uh, in, in the works. Um, we're still kind of uh, the, discussing the, the documentation, sorry, the, the list of RPC calls with, uh, with Peter. We had the meeting this morning. Um, and uh, I think we just shared with you the, the document, so I was going to ask for your input after this call. But uh, overall, yeah, I would say uh, the, the skeleton is already there. But we still need to to um, yeah um, iron out a couple a couple details. Right, right. Cool. Thank you. That's exciting. Um, other items, other research items. Anything before we move on? Cool. Um, next up is networking. We did have a call about eight days ago um, some really good conversation and items came out of that uh, and we've also this has kind of been ongoing uh, debugging and, and interfacing with networking uh, but are there any other updates um, anything on your mind Felix or um, otherwise Hey, sorry, I couldn't really unmute in time. So, uh, um, they, uh, sorry for not participating in the networking call last time. Uh, so, on my side, I'm working on, still working on the new, uh, on the uh, sort of like spec updates to the disk five spec, which will uh, improve the uh, query performance a little bit, and also resolve uh, this one error message that I guess if you've been running it on a testnet, you are also seeing it. Uh, basically, sometimes you can get packets which are seemingly, which have seemingly wrong encoding, but actually it's just a spec bug. So uh, I'm still working on it and I will publish that very soon. Uh, cool, 
I'm actually not sure how to uh, basically uh, I, I'll have something for, for feedback next couple of days and then so would be kind of nice to get into a bit of a conversation with uh, like all of the implementation teams to figure out like what is going to be the path of least resistance to upgrading uh, because the discovery upgrading can be kind of complicated so we have to figure out if we actually want to try to do some soft update or just you know basically uh, <laughs> live with you know like half broken discovery for a couple of weeks until everyone has the right version or if right if so complicated with respect to live nets yeah so if the if the network is live it can be complicated because they will basically be if there's a mismatch in the versions and the and the versions are fundamentally incompatible then right. basically there's no way to do a clean upgrade because basically just means nodes won't find each other mm -hmm. But, so, uh, due to the v012 uh, spec update with the VLS updates coming, um, this it might just be best to wrap this in the same update so that because we're gonna have to restart the nets anyway. Okay, that sounds very good. So, I mean, depends on like, I mean, you were talking about like tentative like June timeline for the next uh, test net, so maybe we can just make it so the updates go in then and then we just launch a new test net with a new version or something. Like that would be great. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, how long do you expect these changes to need to be able to, to go back and forth and, and make it into the spec? Uh, so I guess it's going to take approximately uh, like, I don't know, one, one more week at least to like kind of uh, get the, to like get the, get the actual spec uh, done. And then I'll, I can assist people with the implementation. It's not going to be like, like there's going to be one bigger change to the packet format, but otherwise it's basically going to be fine. Like okay. It's going to be all minor changes. Cool. So uh, what I would say is reach out early uh, to implementers to get feedback and input so we can just kind of streamline this. Um, yeah. But if we can get it done on that timeline, then I think we can avoid the headache of upgrading these nets in live. Uh, yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any questions for Felix? Great. Um, other networking items? Okay. Um, general spec discussion. Uh, I, I have seen those phase one PRs uh, with the bugs. I certainly, the testing on phase one is um, minimal. <laughs> We're currently, so uh, I really appreciate those those bugs. Um, but I've been prioritizing the V zero twelve, but I'll get to those soon. Um, other spec items. I imagine this this one's been pretty quiet for the past six months. The spec item discussion, but as we move into phase one implementations, I'm sure it'll get a little more lively. Mm, I have a question regarding the uh, fork choice tests. Um, will we have them in 0 0.12 or 0 0.5.1? Uh, right. So, Joseph, what is the what is it the the state of the fork choice tests um, that y'all have been working on? Um, are these generated off of the Pi spec, or are these generated off of the old Harmony implementation? And what's the format um, that they're outputting in? Um, and given that format, is it something that we can integrate into the canonical vectors for the next release? Um, I'll let uh, Alex, uh, who's likely on the call, to uh, uh, speak to it. But essentially, what it does is it it, it reads the Pi spec um, and then uh, transpiles it to generate the tests. But Alex, are you on? I don't think he is. Um, I'll knock on y'all's door and see if these tests can appropriately just be shoved into the next release. Um, because if they're already working for you, uh, they can work for others. Yeah, definitely. I think, that's, I think that was his goal though, um, is generally being able to just autom automated, uh, automated test generation for um, all, all the different clients. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna knock on his door. Um, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Joseph.
Okay, any other items here? Um, hi, um, so about the BOS, um, so before this call, I just made an, a PR to fix the phase zero, uh, sorry, phase one, the zero uh, signature issue I post here, and I hope that people who are interested in can take a look like in 24 hours so we can generate the BOS test soon. Thank you. Yeah, I will certainly take a look um, and others can as well. Thank you. Okay, open discussion. Um, anything on anyone's mind? Sweet. Um, awesome work. There's like a ton of moving parts right now and um, it's super, super exciting. Um, thank you everyone and I will talk to y'all soon. Thank you. Cheers, Danny. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.